Tuesday, July 18th, <clears throat> market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. <clears throat> Morning, 10.10 uh, 10 California time, a little bit after the middle of the trading day, and uh, we start out with the stock market indexes, and specifically the S&P 500, <clears throat> which again is making new highs for the rally. I've been very bullish, trying to pick a point here and there when the markets are going to have downside corrections, other minor or major buying opportunities during this 2023 bull market. <clears throat> um, and I'm looking for one coming up very, very soon here. What is new today? We are up against a major historical resistance area, this blue zone. We are almost there, maybe another point. Overbought for the fourth day in a row now. Danger, don't buy markets that are overbought. You're asking for it to gap down and all of a sudden overnight, not surprising in overbought conditions and do some harm to your bank account. You don't like that. There is a gap to close. And that would be a likely spot for the market to come back down to during the next several days, <clears throat> maybe a week, week and a half. And that would be the 443 plus a hair. <clears throat> and that's support also. So like this other gap up situation we had a couple, three weeks ago, it took, it took a few days after it double topped out slightly to come down, close the gaps, and then turn right back up again. And so we have another gap to close. <clears throat> I doubt that the next correction is going to go any lower than 437 and a half, <clears throat> but I am totally expecting it to come down to 443. Now, let's look at the... Um, DIA, very important, new highs today since April 21 of 22, which was a gigantic bearish engulfing, by the way, big sell signal. It wasn't overbought, so I didn't get a red, but I almost did. Okay, so we're coming back to very significant long-term major resistance again overbought conditions for the first time today for the dia and approaching a major resistance area this is prime combination of factors to produce a correction probably back to approximately 343 next chart and that was the spider but i wanted to get the qqqs for you now, for the fourth day in a row, the Qs are also overbought. They have two gaps to close under current conditions. Whoa, didn't want to do that. And I'm expecting the smallest correction to be down to 374 and a fraction, but a little more likely seems to be 368 and a half. And then back up again. Please remember that I'm not turning bearish. This is simply a very normal downside correction and a bull market. <clears throat> bull markets are said to climb a wall of worry and bear markets simply panic and collapse and drop like a rock. So this is very typical for the market to stair step its way up, which has been doing throughout, although the Longer term momentum seems to be getting stronger a little bit quicker. That's also indicative of major long term tops, but I don't think we're there yet. In fact, I would definitely say we're not there yet. But there are signs that it's supposed to have a minor, modest, short term, several days, maybe a week or two at the most, downside correction. Where are we on the 2000, which I've been mentioning pretty consistently these days because it's been very interesting and important. We're right up against a major resistance area and a 
pretty significant bear trend line. This purple line here, um, magenta. It goes back to the highs that were made back in April of 22, way over a year. Plus, you'll see that there's another magenta line at the bottom across the lowest lows since the October 13th bottom of the bear market of 2022 and the beginning of the bull market of 2023. And we did have in most of our indexes a bullish green ER buy signal official. Plus the fact that I started talking about the October lows like I will again this year and again and again. Uh, it is a seasonal tendency. There is a very high percentage likelihood covering the last approximate 30 years that October will be a bottom. God, I don't think it can be much better than last year's October 13th of 2022 turnaround bottom. But hey, I guess it could be better, but that was an unbelievably perfect. So we're overbought, up against resistance, hitting trend lines, <clears throat> no particular gap to close in the 2000s, but some de very decent support at a little bit lower levels. And I fully expect it to come back and get to that support area and then turn right back up again. So that pretty much covers my expected downside correction I've been talking about for a couple of days in the stock market indexes. Let's go to futures. And we're going to start out with not the bean oil. Sorry. I'm going to go to the E-mini. And here we are. Again, overbought for the last four days. No gaps to close because it has much longer trading hours than the SPY. And that does not allow for as many gaps, for example. But the October 13th bullish engulfing green ER buy signal was a whopper. I mean, a huge whopper. On a scale of 1 to 10, that was an 11. So, overbought conditions, looking for a, sm a small short-term downside correction. Next chart is going to be bean oil, and I really didn't want that one. I wanted, okay, so I'm uh, out of sequence here. Just a moment, and let's go to bonds. I pegged in advance the exact turning point low and price level area a week or so ago in the bonds. How? There's a cycle of 88 days that was unbelievably good timing-wise, and it hit right on the money to the day. The low close was on the 88-day cycle low. You go backward 88 trading days and you find the low and the low close both. You go back 88 days and you find the exact same thing. The lowest low and the lowest closing price before the market turned up big time. In fact, the uh, Ehrlich Cycle Forecaster software produces a time frame within this green bar which is called the window of opportunity, you would be, should be supposedly looking for buy signals at around cycle lows. And that's exactly what we got. Going back one more cycle to the exact day, this is the 88 day cycle again. And this time we had a bullish engulfing green buy signal. Perfect. Again, that's four in a row now. Five on the edge of the window of opportunity, but still within the green bar, six. Next, again, now a total of six. And the history earlier is phenomenally good. Just outstanding. One of the best cycles um, that I've seen in a long, long time. I invented the Ehrlich Cycle Finder in 1977. It's the world's oldest technical analysis market excuse me, technical analysis, physical tool, written up in many different technical analysis books, including good old John Murphy's technical analysis of the financial markets, considered to be the Bible of technical analysis. I'm very happy to be in that book. And now we'll go with the next chart after bonds, 10-year notes, I hope. No, I goofed up the sequence here. That's okay. Let's just go through. Soybean meal at a resistance level. 
the cyan line right there, right now, to the tick, high and last. Not quite overbought, but very, very close. I think soybean meal is about to turn back down again very soon and very close to the current quotes. Next chart is corn. Um, neutral territory in RSI in the process of rallying. And it's got elbow room to go up a bit more. It's a little hard to say as to where it's likely in this particular case to stop rallying. But where my cursor is at 535, looks pretty good. I'd watch for sell signals or failures of rallies and that kind of thing at 535. Next. And we've got a resistance area at higher prices we haven't hit yet on wheat. I'll drag it over to the right here. So we could rally some more, but obviously the trend is down and I'm looking for lower levels. But there may be a little bit more rally first. Next, live cattle, bull market, looking for new highs. Don't see a top in sight. Bull markets do get periodically overbought. Nothing wrong with that. We did. We pulled back a little bit. Day or two is fine. And now we're about to have new highs for the trend, it looks like. Next is hogs. We had a sell system that didn't work about a week and a half ago. Nevertheless, today we have a minor new low since then. And that does happen. I get signals that don't perform as exactly like I expect, but they end up being during a topping or bottoming out situation, which is what we have for this last sell signal. It's in the middle of a little bit of a top. Today, we've got a new low since the sell signal and a probable new low close. I'm looking for a little bit more downside correction. This is a bear trend. It could keep coming down a lot and hit much lower levels. I wouldn't be surprised to see it in a matter of maybe a few weeks, 65 and lower. Next. Okay. I've been talking about the head and shoulder top possibility in OJ. The shoulder price levels were just about right for about a week until today. The timing was about right. The price was about right. The way the market was bumping up and down was about adequate. but Today should not have happened if the last six days or so was going to be a last shoulder high. It should have gone down right away. Instead, we have a rally. Now, granted, it's in overbought condition now. And granted, it could end up with a double top. So I'm still looking for it to have a downside correction, but not for the same reasons uh, that I mentioned a head and shoulder before. So I'm going to leave my neckline, this line, on the chart for a few more days and see what happens with this rally. I can expect a little bit more for a day or two, but when it gets super close to those highs that we saw back in May, then I'm expecting it to double top out and turn down some. Next chart, Coco. Hey, new high for the trend. Bull market continues, not overbought yet. Still looking for higher levels. Looking awfully strong on cocoa. Next chart. Cotton the rag, nowhere near the same as some of these others. Big sideways trading range, bouncing back and forth from approximate lows of 77, 76, 75. Two highs, approximately 86. 87, 88, and we just might get up to that 87, 88 again, and why not stop and turn right back down again? Once we get out of this, and we certainly will sooner or later, big sideways trading range, then a very good trend should start. And I have to be biased to the short side because the longer term situation does look bearish. Next chart, sugar to sweet. Looking for this rally to maybe have failed. I mentioned just underneath the previous bull trend line, it stopped the rally 
and in an approximate area of resistance. So yesterday was a big pullback on the downside, and today we're bouncing back a little bit. But I think there's a very good possibility that we could come back into this blue trading support level area, which is around 20 and a bit under, down to 18. Let's call it 20 and a quarter, down to around 18. And that might be a few weeks from now. Next, coffee had a bad buy signal a few days ago. It did offer a tiny profit potential. We had another buy signal just a few days ago three, four, and it did not work. And we have lower lows. I'm expecting it to begin to fall apart, frankly, and just drop off pretty sharply to 150 and maybe easily below that. We're at 156 right now. So bearish. Next chart is 10-year notes. Very much like the bonds, same cycle. I've got this vertical dashed line marking the 88-day rhythm, turned around on, on time fantastically. Bonds and tenure notes have made higher highs since the cycle low today, and I expect to see the uptrend maybe stall out a little in this area, but eventually, and not too long from now, get up to this next significant resistance area and that's going to cause, especially if it does it quickly, a little bit more of a problem. But on a long-term basis, this is going to go down as a potential triple bottom or a broad double bottom from October through July. Yep. And breaking and closing above the last significant resistance area should cause a major bull market to get rolling big time. Next, crude oil got overbought. I think it started, even though today we have a little rally, I think it started its downside correction. I'm not looking for a new high at the moment. I'm looking for it to drop below today's low, which is about the same as yesterday's low very quickly this week and continue to work its way down to challenge the support levels at lower levels. Next is heating oil. Bumped against a major bear trend line, which contains a ER sell signal on the second high and an ER sell signal uh, two days after the highest high, which was overbought. So the major bear trend line is proving to be a good one. Two days ago, we had a bearish engulfing. It started to work and produce some profitable potentials yesterday. It's rallying a bit this morning. I think it's going to stop and turn right back down again and make new lows on heating oil. We got natural gas and a little bit of a rally, but the trend is definitely down. We've had three sell signals lately. Um, all of them produced profit potentials on a short-term basis. This sell signal actually lasted over a week, got oversold, finally bottomed out. This one only lasted a couple of days. This one lasted two or three days. So maybe we'll get even another one in a day or two. But I'm bearish, looking for lower levels in natural gas. Next, gold. We've talked about it. Overbought. I think it's going to turn down. And silver up against a major resistance area. Overbought conditions the last four days. Looking for it to turn back down again immediately. And platinum has bumped up against a major previous bull trend line almost exactly. And it's the second day in overbought conditions. So I'm looking for it to turn down also. Can't help it. High grade resistance area, turning down, looking for lower lows. And we're back to soybeans. Hey, I talked about this being a possible broad historical huge double top. The market today for the first time is rallying clearly in new high ground for a very large number of previous months and years. If it stays here and close above, closes above the previous rally high about two weeks ago, that could be very bullish. I know everybody's worried about climate change and maybe the crops are gonna be affected. Why not? So, that could be a cause here. 
of the move up. And back to bean oil. Well, I got the E-mini. So that's it. Have a great day. See you tomorrow, Wednesday.